This video is going to cover the five features that tenants are reporting they want in rentals. And we're gonna go in reverse order. So 33% of tenants are saying they want this feature up to 70% of tenants say they care most about this feature. And so that will be part one of this video. Part two will be how to talk about these features in your listing because it's not enough for you to just understand that you have those features. You also need to be able to communicate to the tenant that you have these features and highlight them in a way that grabs the tenant's attention. And my hope with that is that you can map directly from what the tenant wants to what your listing has and vice versa. So what your listing has will say to the tenants, hey, those features you want, this listing has. And with that, we can get away from the fear of no one wanting your property. Because I know a lot of people feel this way. I hear about it all the time in my consulting calls. No one likes my stuff. If I have bad style, I pick something wrong, I put myself out there, now I look like an idiot. This video will help you get a grip because I know a lot of you have that fear. You are in good company, but it is kind of an unrealistic fear and we're gonna talk about the way to get control of that fear new to this channel, welcome. My name is Erin Sprenlin. I am a real estate coach and consultant making a video while it is thundering outside. So I have owned my own property since 2014. I have been a consultant slash coach to others since 2017. My goal with this channel is to teach you confidence to buy investments and then also manage your own investments because I happen to really believe that right now in the midterm and long-term space, it's not that hard to run investments and not think about them a lot. In fact, I call myself a lazy investor because even though I love spreadsheets and I'm a bit of a data nerd, I don't love talking to my tenants all the time. And I imagine that that's not really what you want out of your investments either. If you need additional help or you want consulting, I will drop how to book consulting in the description. I offer a one hour package, a two hour package, and then a mentor hand holding package. And the hand holding package, I'll set you up on the platform, give you six hours of coaching, and work with you to vet and source your first tenant. So, so I'm with you all through the experience of the first tenant, including their full rental. Okay, enough with that. Let's get to the first feature that we're going to talk about, which is actually the fifth most requested feature from the tenants. So this request from the tenants is actually going to be more popular probably in condos or townhomes. But even if you have a single family home, there's a way to back into this. And the feature that comes in at number five is amenities. So if you were in a condo or a townhome, you are going to have features at the building level and, the, and then you're going to have features at the in unit level. So features on the building level are going to be like a gym, a pool, parking, laundry potentially. And then in unit features also could be laundry, they could be AC, they could be a bathtub, people like that, dog friendly, etc. So whatever your amenities are, you're going to highlight them. And again, as a reminder, the second part of this video, we'll talk about how to highlight those features. Good way to figure out what your features are, are to think about what are things that tenants are regularly reporting to you that they like or that they're looking for. If you had lived in the property, what did you like about it? If you bought the property, why did you buy the property? What were the features that appealed to you? And start ranking those. That will give you an idea of what is most important for your property. At 50%, Factor number four is a factor that I hate, but a lot of tenants like. Uh, it's something that I think that you should consider avoiding even though it's popular. Uh, and the reason why I think you should avoid it is because it's expensive and it's time consuming and that's probably not going to change in the future. The other reason why I hate it and don't like it in my properties is because it's something that the existing tenant is not going to care about and any new tenants are going to care about because it's going to be their first impression. And again, 50% of tenants care about this, and that is private outdoor space. So AKA a yard. Yards are the bane of my existence because you have to manage them. You have to pay someone to manage them. The tenants will come in and say that they'll manage them. They won't manage them. So then you have to decide whether or not you're gonna absorb that cost or pass it on. If it's a single family home and you have a big space, start to think now about how you can bring down that space and make the part of the yard that you're going to manage smaller versus bigger. And this may mean rocking it in 
or adding turf or making part of it look really nice and the rest of it is wild, fencing in part of it. Just think about ways that you can get a big yard under control because I have found it to be a not fun project for myself. Now, now another thing to think about here is that if you're in a condo, it's probably only relevant with condo. I think most townhomes do have private outdoor space, but if you're in a condo and you don't have a balcony and you don't have any private space to speak of, but your building has a shared dog park or a rooftop, still talk about that because it is access that the tenant is going to have to outdoor space without it being exactly private. It's still private from most of the public. It's just not private specific to them, but highlighting that is still a good thing to do and it will appeal to a lot of tenants. 50% of them, in fact, care about it more than they care about anything else. Okay, factor number three coming in at 61%. Let me say this before I give it away. You can't know what everyone likes, but there are kind of three things that I find a lot of tenants like and a lot of buyers like. The most popular factor that a lot of tenants are mentioning at 61% is floor plan. But what does that mean? Uh, floor plans mean different things depending depending on if you have family or if you're single and couples. So here's just three tips that I have found pretty much work universally across all rentals. So the first one is at least two toilets. The second one is if you have two bedrooms or more that they are spread out. So one bedroom over here, the kitchen in the middle and one bedroom over here, that kind of maximizes privacy. And then the third thing that I find to be a universally appealing feature in a property is an open kitchen. So a kitchen where moms or dads, if they're cooking, can watch their kids while the kids play or watch TV, or for people that don't have kids or a family or anyone that they're trying to keep eyes on to keep safe, just having an open kitchen allows them to socialize with whoever's in the living room watching TV or relaxing after work or reading a book. So I think an open kitchen is extremely important and will be very appealing to your tenant base. If you feel like you're learning something from this video, please like it. If you have recognized any of these property features when you were a renter, tenant, or when you were buying, please drop it in the comments. I know other people will have a curiosity about this as well. Also, if you're thinking that I'm missing something in the way this space should be laid out, uh, tell us. I'm sure people will gain value from that as well. All right, the second most important factor to tenants, this one is wild to me. I coach and consult on this all the time, but it actually surprises me that the tenants are calling it out and like specifically listing it. It's kind of one of those things where I thought they would know about it, but they wouldn't necessarily know to report back on it, which makes me curious, like did this poll actually give it as an option and people responded to it or did they volunteer that information? Either way, this is something that you can't necessarily control, but just like the space tips, I'm gonna give you some hints on how to manage this. And so the number two factor that potential tenants cared about is landlord likability. Now, how am I supposed to be a likable landlord if I'm 65 or 70 and the majority of my tenants are under 30? How am I supposed to connect with them? It's a generation that I don't totally understand. What do I do there? So the first tip that I'll give you that I see all the time and listings is let's say you have a rule about something and that rule could be smoking or cleaning up after their pet or quiet hours, right? So when you have a rule like this, it's really important that you only mention it once or maybe twice max, but don't mention it all over the place. Do not underline it. Do not bold it. Do not put exclamation marks. Act like it's business as usual. Act like you expect them to consent to that rule. The mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they really call attention to this and they mention it multiple times. And right off the bat, that's very off-putting to the tenant because it suggests that you don't trust them. You expect them to come in and cause problems and you guys haven't even met. So that suggests a certain level of paranoia about you that will be off-putting to the tenant. So whatever your rules are, it's totally fine to have them, but write them in a way that suggests that you expect them to have compliance with it, not 
not that you're suspicious that they won't. The second coaching tip I have for my consulting clients that come in around this particular landlord likability is that when someone reaches out to you, respond to them within the day. It doesn't need to be within 30 seconds or two minutes. You kind of don't want to come off as too eager, but within the same day. And then also keep it concise. Be friendly and say, hi, I'm Erin. So glad you reached out. Uh, answer their question and then say, what else can I answer for you? That's a good email because you are responding to their question. You're not sharing information about yourself that's not relevant and you are using full sentences. It's really off-putting to get one word answers back from someone. It makes them seem impatient or lazy or put out. So you do kind of want to introduce yourself, write in full sentences, but you also don't want to go overboard and share a bunch of information that's completely irrelevant to the tenant that may turn them off and or just limit their ability to get access to the information they actually care about. The final factor that tenants care the most about, and this one comes in at 72% care most about, it's so boring, but it makes sense, is pricing. So they don't want to overpay for a property. It is easy enough to find this information on Zillow Rental Manager, on Rentometer. Those are free platforms that are pulling big data for you and can tell you, you're gonna see some variance based on where the property is located and how it's styled, but that will give you a good baseline factor of how you should price your rental. All right, and then the second part of this video, which is how to advertise your rental. So it is a three part strategy. The first and most obvious is to fill out your rental as thoroughly as you can on the platform. So fill out all the filters, right? So if you have two bedrooms, make sure you're including that, put in the square footage, put in if you have a fireplace, put in that you have parking space, put in if you're dog friendly, put in if you're furnished. I think it's easy to kind of like halfway fill these out because it just gets boring and old, but obviously the best way to communicate everything you have is to fill out the filters. Tip number two is to show it in pictures. Whether or not that is a washer and dryer or garage space, no matter how boring, just re-emphasize for them that this amenity exists, right? So if you have storage, if you have two parking spaces, if you have a washer and dryer, a dishwasher, you wanna photograph that and put it in there so that not only are they seeing it in the filters list of the amenities, but they're also actually seeing that it exists so they are being reminded that they want you have. And then the final tip on this is to write it in the listing and write it in bullet points. Too many times I see people put these really like flowery language. They're trying to sell the property. No one is coming to rental properties to read high pros. They are coming to the rental property to figure out what it has. And so make it bullet points, make it as easy as possible for them to see it. And then as a rule of threes, it's always good to continue to remind people what you have. And so in this case, we're covering it with filters, photos, and writing. And then if you are looking for what platforms, where do I need to be to find tenants, I have a video on one of my favorite platforms and you can check it out right here.